Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast in the Bible, our video series reflecting on the daily texts of the Revised Common Lectionary. I'm Pastor John Paul of Pleasant Valley Lutheran Church in Oliva, Wisconsin. Here on this series, we start with the belief that just as breakfast fuels your body for the day, so too we should start our day with the Bible, with God's Word, and fuel our souls for the day ahead. And so our goal is this, to bring you a short, 10 minute or less, reflection on one of the day's assigned texts. So a reminder as we begin, in the lectionary, Sunday always stands at the center of the lectionary week. And so the texts from Wednesday to Saturday reflect forward toward Sunday. And the texts for Monday and Tuesday reflect back on the previous Sunday. So come along, grab your coffee, grab your breakfast, and grab your Bible, and let's get your day started right. This is Breakfast in the Bible. B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. We stand to get Word of God, B-I-B-L-E, Bible. Welcome. Thank you for joining me here today on Saturday, May 9th. Today's our last day looking forward, right, to Sunday's text, John 14, In My Father's House There Are Many Rooms. Now, as a reminder, if you look uh, below the YouTube video, there's um, a description section. In there, each day, I post a link to all the texts for today. So there's two or three, sometimes four texts assigned for every day of the week. Uh, and we pick one of them, right, to reflect on together. So here today from John's Gospel, John chapter 8, starting at verse 48. The Jews answered him, are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it and he is the judge. Very truly, I tell you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. The Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died. And so did the prophets, yet you say, whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? The prophets also died. Who do you claim to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me. He is of whom you say he is our God, though you do not know him. But I know him. If I would say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you, but I do know him and I keep his word. Your ancestor Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. Then the Jew said to him, you are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. The word of the Lord. Again, as we do each day, I invite you to think about what, as you heard that read, what jumped out in your hearing? What stood out to you from that passage? Or if you're reading along or you choose one of the other texts to read, as you read through, what jumps out from the page uh, for you? What stands out as you, as you read? And then you take that and you reflect on that thing that stood out, that passage or those words, that sentence that stood out and ask yourself, what is God saying to me for my day? And what is God trying to tell me about following Jesus right here today? And so from this John chapter eight passage, you know, I'm not as familiar with John as I am with some of the other gospels. And uh, this was kind of a new passage for me. It's not one we hear regularly on Sunday mornings. In fact, I don't think we ever hear it in our three-year lectionary cycle. But here it is on Saturday, the day before we hear from John 14. And what stood out to me, you know, yesterday we had the text uh, from Moses standing at the burning bush. And we didn't get all the way there, but in that text, it goes on and Moses asks the burning bush, asks God, when the Egyptians ask who sent me, who should I say? Now remember, Moses lived in a time with lots of different gods. It could have been any god that was sending him. 
and Jesus and, and the burning bush, and God says, Tell them I am sent you. Well, now jump forward into John's gospel that we heard today. And Jesus says, Before Abraham was, I am. I am. So Jesus is taking the divine name of God, right? The holy tetragram, we call it. Four Hebrew letters, Yod, He, Vav, He. If you were to kind of put those into English letters, you'd get Y-H-W-H. It's where we get the word Yahweh from, the holy name of God. And Jesus is saying, before Abraham, even before the first patriarch of our faith, I am. I am God. I was there before Abraham. Jesus is telling us something about his relationship to God. That Jesus isn't just another one of the prophets, isn't just another Moses, not another Isaiah or Ezekiel, who's telling the people to repent. Jesus is God himself come to earth. And if you and I are baptized into Jesus, then that says something about then our relationship through Jesus to God the Father. So you see, it's all about relationship. You and I are in relationship with God the Father through Jesus. In the passage, Jesus said to those who were questioning him, I am of the one who you call God, but you don't know him. But I do know him. So for Jesus, for those of us who are baptized into Jesus, who are followers of Jesus Christ, we come to know God the Father through him. Through Jesus, we get to know who God is. And then God plays an intimate role in your and my life. It's pretty incredible what the claim Jesus is making. Not only is he saying that he is God, applying the holy name of God to himself, but he's also saying that through him, you come to know who God is. And through Jesus, God has a personal relationship with you in your life. Part of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus is to share in an intimate personal relationship with God through Christ. It's incredible. It's amazing. And you are invited to that today. Let us pray. Holy and mighty God, oftentimes in our lives you feel apart. You feel distant from us. But you remind us that through Jesus, we have come to know and share in a personal relationship with you. Fill our lives this day. Fill our moments and our minutes and our hours this day as we walk beside you, following Jesus, serving a world that you love and our neighbors in need. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessings to you on your day.